You but, think you think Tommy's going to stay Dodger manager? There's talk that he might be going to St. Pete as yeah, the Piazza. Yeah, I, I really think I think he'll, he'll stay with the Dodgers. Right. I think he I think he believes that there is a chance for them to finish above Houston. Right. Uh, <laughs> uh, Houston's having a great year. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> everybody's having a great year except the Dodgers. You know, Henry Rodriguez the other night. Did you see him? He was Not out in the outfield going, "That's over my head." <laughs> He didn't even run for it. He just went, it's over my head. <laughs> it was great. And Lenny Harris is at second base going, oh, the game's on. You know, so this is, a, this is a struggling team, I guess, is what you was Struggling? That's yeah. a wild guess. <laughs> a wild guess. Struggling. Kevin Gross is on the mound, you know, and he got a, he got a no-hitter. And ever since then, you can't talk to him. He just sits alone in a dugout smelling his glove. <laughs> and Tom Candiotti throws that, you know, that... The knuckler. That, yeah, that funny pitch. And his arm is like this at home, you know. They, they put him in a VA hospital and go, make your wrist work, you know. <laughs> But they, they, got, they got a great future. Kip Gross they bring in. Then you know the game's over. Right, Kip Gross. Yeah, ninth inning, great stretch move. Mm -hmm. And then he pitches, and, you know. The scoreboard, yeah, you know, the walls in Dodger Stadium are going, don't, it hurts! <laughs> don't hit me anymore! <laughs> don't hit me anymore, I can't take it! The ball keeps hitting the wall, yeah. and Tommy leans on the dugout, and Joe Ferguson, who stands right behind him, goes, what do you think, Tommy? I think I hit the wall. <laughs> you know why we're doing this, because everybody's asking, what's going to happen to Don Rickles now that he, he's locked out of Tommy Lasorda's sort of locker room? You know, Uberoth came up with that edict, no stars in the locker rooms anymore. What about that? What, how's that affecting you, Don? Well, it depressed me for about, say, two seconds. <laughs> right. Because Tommy is annoying. I mean, the man is always busy promoting baseball is like a hobby. The man is promoting lawnmowers, anything that moves hot dogs, restaurants, mm -hmm. Italians, Italy, Sinatra. It's his whole life. Are you still on the wall, by the way? He had the Sinatra wall. He had a small Rickles wall. Unless a painter came in while I was away, <laughs> yes. He, he kept it up and... Uh, he keeps the wall with me and Frank and has candles by it and uh, we're the only ones that understand them. So uh -huh. it's very nice though. But Tommy's been very nice that way. I remember recently when the, when the Dodgers hit some rough times, I guess every day is rough times of the Dodgers these days, that Tommy asked you to do an emergency meeting with the Dodgers. Not in the locker room, that would have been breaking the rules, but off to the side in a little room. They called some of the players together. Well, how about the team? The entire team. Uh, he, 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 I went to the game last week, as a matter of fact. My wife and I, and uh, I said, Tommy, there's no more locker room. I'm off the hook. Leave me alone. You know, I, I don't have to go down there and do 30 minutes and explain to them why the Dominion Republic will be invaded. <laughs> so uh, I, I go down there, and Tommy comes out, and the hugs and the kisses and the whole thing with my wife. And Bob. So I said, just, just wait a minute here in the hall. And he brought the whole team out, mm. the whole team out. Most of them were injured. They come out with crutches, one guy limping. <laughs> Enos Cabell was carried in. Bill Madlock was laying on the floor whining. <laughs> Len Matusak had seven bandages on with a little, with a little quiver. And uh, Mario and Duncan was the only one that knew what was going on, but he was skipping around doing the mambo in the hall. I mean, so the whole team's in good shape. They have a big year ahead of them. They've got to finish the season. Now, I wanted to ask you, right, that's the, that's the key thing. I wanted to ask you about some of these players. Now, obviously, we shouldn't make too light of Pedro Guerrero. He's hurting right now. He's got a knee injury. But you saw Guerrero. He looked pretty good to you. He looked great. I, th I think the guy really wants to get back to his country and become a general <laughs> and uh, run an army. I don't know if you know this. In the offseason, he's tried to stage a military coup of his government. That was... How could he do that? He can't even spell the name of his government. <laughs> Man sits around going, da, da, ga, bang, gang, gang, bang, gang. He just puts his radio on loud and thinks he's home. That's right. What about Fernando, Fernando Valens? Have any observations about him? Yeah, well, it's annoying, though, because he sits in a locker room with a rooster. Has one of these big chickens and, you know, keeps him awake. But mm -hmm. uh, he's, he's, you know, since he started to speak English, you know, I found out his personality. He's speaking English to you, right? He doesn't talk to a lot of, a lot of the Well, with me, uh, speaking English. I say, hello, Fernando. He says, I won't bring you coffee. <laughs> that's I mean, it. that's about that's the extent, the extent of, it. of it. We don't have no one-on-one -on -one chit chat He's not going to be over the house for dinner. And Steve Sachs, is he still hyper? Uh, he's in heat. <laughs> big, big heat. <laughs> Kids looking <laughs> while he's playing, he's looking in the stands, going, "She must be 12." <laughs> if I could only hit her a grounder. Man's in terrible heat. Here's the question of the year in sports. I'm a, listen, I'm a Jewish kid from Miami Beach. Keep I know it you. Doing. There's a lot of people watching that aren't Jews. We got <laughs> enough trouble. Well, let me tell you. I remember you used to work at the beach for for a lot of years, and this is always the key question. Everyone asks this about it. Why is it that Jews don't make it big in sports? Because we usually own the arenas. <laughs> right. Own the arenas, own the field, own the equipment. Represent the you know, players. Years ago at City College, before your time, there mm -hmm. was like Sid Trubowitz and Tannenbaum and all the guys that I know today that are, you know, pretty well much up there. But you don't need a, 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 a Tuffy Lehman's. It was a great football. Tuffy Lehman? Yeah, that's way before your time. Tuffy yeah, Lehman? That's when you were locked in your bathroom with a guitar. <laughs> but uh, I'm telling you, these guys, I mean, the, the, 
Jewish people don't go into sports. They usually supervise the whole thing. They had great guys like Hank Greenberg. Who uh, didn't play? Sid, I, yeah. right, right. Sid Luckman, Sandy Koufax. Then it drops down. Then you got Ernie Grunfeld. <laughs> That's drops. a watch. I never <laughs> heard of that. <laughs> That's right. Basketball. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I heard of it. That's sure. okay. Well, there's something about that, though. They just well, yeah, they don't yeah. like the physicality. They sit around with the, They're so busy buying their wives jewelry. They have no time for sports. <laughs> I mean, I mean, when I was a kid, I mean, my, my father said, get a job. You know, who had time to run around the gym with a basketball and dribble all over yourself? Mm -hmm. So uh, most of these people, uh, I, I, you know, today it's all the blacks. There was a time it was all the, the, the Jewish kids were the fighters. You remember mm -hmm. that? Mm, sure. All the, all the Jewish. Maxie Rosenblum, all, all down oh, through the years. You know everybody. Right? I do. I know Gee, Roy, you're on top of everything. <laughs> <laughs> Who would know Maxie Rosenblum? Out of the blue, a man comes up with a name, <sighs> Maxie Rosenblum, who was knocked out and was never told. Right. But uh, I, must, I must tell you, uh, <laughs> Lou Nova wanted to be Jewish, but we wouldn't accept him. <laughs> we had a lot of stiffs. Abe Simon, another one. <laughs> Boom, laid down. Yeah, his last words were his mouthpiece fell out. Long live Israel. I went into a, <laughs> went into a coma. That was about it. But we didn't have many great, uh, well, except, uh, you know, Benny Leonard. And that's mm -hmm. way back. But. Ray Arcel's a great trainer. Yeah, well, again, a Jewish guy in the corner who yells, get up. <laughs> I mean, Jewish guys, when they get hit, they go, get up, Irving, get up. That's usually some black guy going, I can, Mr. Lipschitz, I'm tired. Get up. The count's 48 already. Roll over. Okay, we're going to come back with Don Rickles in a few moments. We'll talk about why he doesn't play golf and the hockey playoffs <laughs> with our guest, Don Rickles, after this. The guys used to go into the net, no helmets, no teeth. I had never had teeth. They used to come in and just take the, take the, take the hockey stick going, I was a goal, man. <laughs> <laughs> I think the first time I met Don Rickles was in the locker room of the Los Angeles Lakers about three, four years ago, the playoffs. You're a big basketball fan, right? Yeah, I love basketball. Yeah. You like going down low, though, sitting down low to really hear what's going on. Joe there. Smith is my connection. He's a former record guy. He's now a producer in motion pictures. But he always got me in those floor seats, you know, when the players come through flying over your wife and, you know, and sometimes they lay there a few minutes. <laughs> yes, I right. noticed my wife, some guy was laying there and my wife had a little smile. <laughs> so I said, get up at time. <laughs> 20 second timeout's over. <laughs> right, right, and my right. wife said, come back, come back. <laughs> There's no 24 second clock in a situation like that. No, no, no. wife grinned. Yeah. Big, large guy. What do, you, uh, what do you see when you watch the action down on the, on the court? I see a lot of a lot of pushing, a lot of hitting, a lot of. I, I love when magic comes in on a layup. You know, it goes. Oh man! <laughs> Guys, what's the matter? You scored. There's no foul. Oh man! Well, that's the it. whole team. They go home at night. Man! The only around the house love doing that. Man! <laughs> oh man! They foul themselves just to relax. Why is it that? You're not a trap. I, I, I think hockey's a great sport, and ESPN's got a lot of coverage on hockey this year. It doesn't seem like you were real attracted to hockey, per se. Well, hockey, when I was a kid in New York, at Madison Square Garden, the old Madison Square Garden, New York Rangers, Muzz Patrick, Alfie Pike. I'm going way back, when they didn't have sticks. <laughs> right. They just ran out this and threw it way puck. back. They yeah. threw it at each other. You know? <laughs> the guys used to go into the net, no helmets, no teeth. They had never had teeth. They used to come in and just take the, take the, take the hockey stick going, I was a goal man. <coughs> <laughs> and so, uh, I mean, it was, there was no the fights. Well, forget it. Gloves were off. It was really a terror. In Southern California, you know, Jerry Buss said the, the Kings, they, they're going to build a good franchise. But it's, it's with them, when the sun's shining and it's hot, you know, that skating, the atmosphere, the smell of the old garden in New, in New York. And if you go to Canada, you know, like when Montreal's in the Stanley Cup, most times mm -hmm. they are at Toronto. Mm -hmm. I mean, the, you know, you could say the Russians are flying into, the, into Toronto to bomb, and the guy goes, 2-1, Montreal. <laughs> right, Nobody goes to the gun important. station, forget about it. Russia could capture the country. Right, right. You love fighting, boxing, I mean, boxing. No, not, to, not to participate. No, and of course. I love those guys who do the karate, go, yeah, yeah. I grew up in a neighborhood where you come up from behind with a pipe. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. And a guy with the belt, the pajamas, is laying on the floor, some Chinaman going, oh, no, 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 stand it, I don't understand it. <laughs> Don, you went to the, the Holmes Spinks fight recently, a couple yeah. of weeks ago. What yeah. did you think of that fight? To be very honest, I, I sat at ringside. I was, I was, my wife kept looking at Bruce Willis and, uh, <laughs> and Don Johnson, you know, and, and Don King sat in front of us, so naturally I thought I was watching the picture, the fight through a jungle. <laughs> the hair was about eight feet high, and there were little monkeys hanging in there. Little monkeys hanging in his head. Anyway, I kept saying, Don, will you move your head a little left? The animals are starting to annoy me. But I thought Larry, Larry Michael Spinks. The animals are starting to annoy yes. me. What is that? <laughs> this isn't a recording. Try to try to hear it the first time. Anyway, uh, Roy, pull yourself together, right. huh? and don't perspire. Just right. they got great fans here. One guy on the roof going. <laughs> 
Uh, but I got to tell you that uh, I thought Holmes won the fight. Uh, it was a close fight. But Did you Michael's speak to Larry after the fight? No, no. Larry doesn't speak to anybody. <laughs> Larry was in a 7-Eleven uh, store pulling a hold up right after the fight. Uh, <laughs> and Michael was sitting in his room with his brother Leon saying, come on, Leon, snap out of it. <laughs> and Leon couldn't talk because three more teeth were missing and it was just a wind, wind tunnel. So uh, I got to tell you, that could cost me. I could get it. Oh, yeah. But I must say that... Uh, All of this could cost you time. Nah, nobody that. watches this. <laughs> <laughs> you, you don't think I came down here because I knew somebody was going to watch it because you begged and you know your show was shaky. So uh, I, I, I'm, I thought the fight was, was exciting. I really did. I love heavyweights. But Michael Spinks is a light heavyweight, in my opinion. And he, looked like, he looks like a small man fighting a large man. And unfortunately, Larry Holmes really didn't have the energy to knock him out, I mean, mm -hmm. near the end there, because he hit him some great shots. And he wasn't, he, Larry Holmes was really, a, he, he, this fight would have been his last win, lose, or draw, in my opinion. Who was your been. favorite fighter of all? Who was the guy that? Oh, Joe Lewis. Yeah, still and, and Marciano, second. I grew up with Joe Lewis, by mm -hmm. that I mean. You see any of their fights? Oh, I saw Rocky Marciano and I saw Joe Lewis, yeah. I saw Joe Lewis at once in Vegas. We sat together. We used to, I used to see him on the golf course and say, Joe, I'm going to knock you right on you. You know what? Don't get out of line. And he'd go, homo, 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 homo. And by the time he finished, I was in my hotel room asleep. <laughs> so I never know what he said. This was on the beach, Miami? No, no, the, uh, Miami Beach, too. And then in Las Vegas, we used to kid around on the golf course. Joe was a marvelous man. Did you know Jake LaMotta? Yes, I knew him in Miami. He was great. He, he chewed up my mother once. <laughs> So Jake is my mother. <laughs> Tough guy. And I had to give him rabies, rabies shots. Didn't he have a club in Miami Beach? Yeah, but it, it, Jake was really rough. Now he's a, now he's a monk. Now he's is very, he, yeah, he's, he's I think he's on Valium. <laughs> something sedated. He just lays around. The house. He doesn't even snore anymore. Just lays in the bed and goes, hmm, hmm. <laughs> and you, if you hear him, throw a net over him. But Jake was was very rough in his day. But I think that was an image he created, and he grew up with tough guys. The, the fight game in those days was very, very rough. Mm -hmm. it's, it's cleaned up 100%. I mean, in those days, <laughs> you had to be tough, otherwise you didn't survive. But Jake was a tough character. Guests on Sports Look receive compact binoculars from Bosch & Lam, one of the first names in sports optics. Waterproof, fog-proof, and center focus, they get you close to the action. Furnished by Bushnell. That's what we're going to get for Don Rickles, a nice pair of binoculars oh. as a gift for being on the program. Gives me a chance to ooh, <laughs> hang around and look for girls. <laughs> but really, when you think about it, we're going to talk now about uh, different people that involve themselves in sports in one way or the other. First of all, probably the most talked about person we've ever had on this program, Howard Cosell. Well, everybody does them, you know, yes. kidding around. The vernacular of a Don Rickles. You see, Howard Cosell is a really, basically not a bad guy. He really, you know, he's got that reputation to be very tough. The trouble with it, if you're alone with Howard Cosell and he says a couple of statements to you, you have to go and look it up in a book. Mm -hmm. Because Howard takes pride in being very intellectual and very bright and very opinionated. Mm -hmm. But that's what made him one of a kind. He was dying to be me, but he never made it, unfortunately. <laughs> Uh, he runs behind me at testimonial dinners and says, what are you going to do, Rickles? I said, Howard, leave me alone. Go away. He doesn't know go away. Mm -hmm. But basically, Howard and I have had a good relationship, and he knows me a lot of years. What do you think of Peter Uberoff? I think Peter Uberoff is sort of like... Wait, wait, wait. What Peter you... Uberoff. Okay. Well, okay. <laughs> in my neighborhood, guys like him never came around. <laughs> Who has a name like that unless you're Wonder Bread? I mean, let's face it. I mean, Peter Uberoff is the kind of guy that has a corned beef on white with mayo, you know, and a glass of milk and goes, <laughs> I, I see you're touching drugs there, fella. <laughs> <laughs> you're going to get high and won't be able to catch a ball. But uh, he, he, he seems to be a nice guy. You know, if you're the American flag, gets up in the morning with Bob Hope and a salute. How about Roselle? Pete Roselle is a, is a good guy. He really is. He knows my friend Leonard Toes, who used to own the Eagles. Mm -hmm. And uh, when Peter found uh, Pete, Pete Roselle is the kind of guy that, uh, that sits up in the press box and keeps saying, did you meet the wife? And he said, who cares? <laughs> you know, has a lovely wife. But Pete's okay. How about Larry Bird of the Celtics? You ever meet Larry? No, but Larry Bird is the kind of guy you'd meet on the highway going, 27, 42, got a flat. <laughs> the, the truck blew up. He did, you know, he's a great basketball player, but being alone with him on New Year's Eve would be difficult. How about athletes as actors in general in this town? What about the fact that... Well, Lyle Alzado, who's going to tell him he stinks? You know, <laughs> I mean, he does a hammerlock and it's all over. You go, you're marvelous, Al. Ah! You know. So it's not to Joe Namath, another, you know, rocket scientist as far as an actor, you know. You should do silent pictures. <laughs> but my luck, Joe will hear about this and try to hurt me. But what the hell, I'm a Jewish guy, so I'll get a good lawyer. Anyway, so, uh, but most of, I don't, I can't think offhand. Uh, who do you know that's a... Good actor? Well, let's how, do, how long have you been doing Mike. that? <laughs> Mike a, Warren, the guy from Hill Street Blues, who played at UCLA. He's yeah, he's cute. Good. Not a great actor. I mean, Tom Harmon, another kid, you know what I mean. Mark Harmon. Mark yeah, well, I, I saw him in Hawaii. I said, Mark, how are you? He said, 
Fine. 77 blue. Oh, and he ran right through me. That was a bit. The only guy. What about staying in shape? A lot of people, you look pretty good. No, you're, well, you're not, I could, you know, you I look, could have You swim, time. right? You're in pretty... Swim every day a half hour. Could have about 10 pounds off, but the wife keeps giving me food because everything's in her name. <laughs> <laughs> so she keeps saying, eat, eat, sweetheart, eat. And then does the medicine trick. You know, the medicine's on the night table. Try to reach the medicine, hun. And she keeps moving the night table away. Uh -huh. So I should die in a year, tops. <laughs> And she'll be in Paris with Ginny Newhart going, let's get the blue dress. It's a shame he passed away. And the brown <laughs> shirt and the jewelry. No, the thing, now you know this. A lot of people ask you about your hair, that you let your hair go out a yeah, little bit. They said that I you're had, not sick or anything. You're feeling great. They said I had the big C once. They said when my mother, rest her soul, passed away, that happened. And I said, no, it's age. When you get older, you know, you go to Shangri-La. You look for Ronald Coleman and Sam Jaffe and say, kiss my llama. <laughs> And that's what happens. You get gray and you, and, you, and you start to spit up and wheeze and go to bed at night. You'll find out all these things as you get to going on 60 in May. You know, you start belching and wheezing and spitting up. And the wife keeps saying, does he sound adorable? Anything for the money. Don't go along with anything for the money. Finally, we have just seconds left. How would you characterize sports in your life, Don Nichols? I never made it big in sports no, in my life. I, I tried out for the basketball team at Newtown High School where I went. I, uh, I was too short to dribble under the basket. I tried out for baseball. That was a little too physical. I never got into physical stuff. I always stood back and observed. I made a phone call and had somebody else do the physical work. Mm -hmm. uh, to this day, I have a fellow, Harry Goins, that's with me 25, 27 years. If there's any violence, I say, Harry, here's a couple of bucks. Go take care of it. <laughs> I don't believe in anything physical. I believe in watching the sport, you know, just like the, uh, the what it called, the Romans did with the lions, mm -hmm. only certainly not eating up the Jews. <laughs> That wouldn't be funny. <laughs> so uh, I enjoy watching. I'm an observer. I love all, all aspects of sports, except I don't get too crazy about the, uh, the double Sorkel and the three and a half gainer, the high board stuff. You know, that the track and field is not particularly my bag because I think they're going to run their hearts out and win a $2 cup. <laughs> Don Rickles, he enjoys watching. We enjoy listening and watching and have for so many years. May I just say one thing? Please. Louis? Please don't call me again. <laughs> I mean, this was a tough thing for me to come down here early in the morning. There's no need for it, Roy. No, no. This thing is not going to make it. <laughs> you get yourself a good job. You're a nice Jewish kid. Go back to Miami and do what you do best. Mrs. Katz, you're swimming out too far. That's your better thing. Get a job as a lifeguard. Don't Thank call you, me Tom. anymore. Thank you, Tom. Okay, Roy. We'll be back, back with more. Don't happens. call me anymore. Never, never again. <laughs> I can't. <laughs>